By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a finals played in the X Points Old School League. This is finals number 12. And we're going to look at uh, Winter Ganon, piloted by David, and he's taking on a deck piloted by Priestley, and that deck is called Blue Trolls. And uh, yeah, I'm always enjoying looking at these X-Points decks because they usually bring something new to the table. Now remember, X-Points is a format where they play according to the Atlantic rule set, so that means that Fallen Empires is allowed and we are playing with Mana Burn. Also, it has a point system, right? The X stands for 10 points that you can spend on uh, uh, allocated point cards in your deck. So here is an overview of the current version of the point list because this point list can change depending on the input of the uh, community, which is kind of nice. Um, by the way, if you want to join this community, I'll add a link to their Facebook page in the description down below. And in that same description, you can also find uh, more information about the rules and you can also find timestamps. And the reason I'm saying that is that I know that some people enjoy going straight to the Magic games. The best way to do that is by using the timestamps. There's a timestamp called MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. As for here, I'm going to continue with the deck deck. I'm actually going to start with the deck of David Winter Geddon. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of David Winter Geddon. And uh, maybe it's good to first kind of explain what... Urnum Ganon is because this is basically an Urnum Ganon deck uh, with, with some cool twists, definitely. And Urnum Ganon, the idea of this deck is you want to ramp up early. We see Birds of Paradise, we see Felwer Stone, we see Demoxin. So you want to ramp up early, play out a big beef boy like Urnum Jin or Sarah Angel, and then you want to play your Armageddon so that you don't have any lands, but also your opponent doesn't have any lands. And then your opponent doesn't have an answer for your big creature threat. And you basically win from there. So those are the basics of this deck. Now, obviously, when you play with Armageddon, it goes together really well with Lantex, right? Lantex in a Shaman from Legends that lets you find three cards out of your three land cards, basic lands, out of your deck during your upkeep if your opponent has more lands than you. So when you play your Armageddon with the Lantex on board, you're kind of punishing your opponent for rebuilding, right? Your opponent wants to play out a land, but if he does, he knows that the next turn, you can draw three lands out of your library, which is, you know, pretty insane. Like Lantex is super strong, also in old school, but also in other formats. Now, the interesting thing here is of this deck by David is he's made some changes. He's going more onto the control route, he's not only doing Armageddon. The first thing I notice here is he's only playing two Armageddons, and instead of, for example, a lot of these decks carry three Armageddons, some, sometimes even four, because the card is just such an important part of the strategy. But David is choosing a different route. For example, he's, he's playing with two Winter Orbs, and of course the Winter Orb goes really well with Icy Manipulator, because you can deactivate your Winter Orb using your Icy Manipulator. Remember, Winter Orb is one of those two artifacts together with Howling Mind that you can tap down to deactivate, making it a really, really interesting card to kind of brew around. Um, we're also seeing Dark Heart of the Wood, three Dark Heart of the Wood. A Dark Heart of the Wood is one green and one uh, black to cast for an enchantment that reads Sacrifice a Forest, Gain Three Life. So again, this is, um, this is good in multiple ways, right? It's a good control card because you can gain life and life equals time. But it's also fantastic with the land tax, right? When your opponent is not ahead on lands, you can simply sack some forests through your uh, your dark heart of the wood, and that will activate your land tax again, so that you can search for more forests. And the, and again, those forests equal three lives, so that's quite a nice synergy. So it's going to be really tough to um, to kill David once he has dark heart of the wood and land tax together on board. Okay, so this is the deck of David. Very, very interesting. Really looking forward to see this deck in action. Oh, before, before I move on, by the way, you're probably wondering, why is there a time elemental in the deck? It is not a time elemental. It is the Spanish version of Sarah Angel. It is a common reprint. It is, uh, it's pretty cool that you own one, and I'm looking forward to see that hit the board. Okay, this is the deck of David. Now let's take a look at the deck of Priestley. And here we see the deck Blue Trolls piloted and designed by Priestley. And um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I see a lot of three CMC uh, creatures here. And I think this deck is a mix of several things, right? We see Troll Disco. We also see Aggro. We see a little bit of Discard. Um, I think what 
Priestley wants to do. And it's always kind of difficult because then you're guessing. But based on the cards I see in this deck is, you know, he wants to get to three mana as quickly as he can. He doesn't have any ramp, so that will just happen at turn number three, but that's fine. And then he'll cast a creature that just gives you a lot of bang for your buck, right? I mean, Setch Troll, Hypnotic Spectre, and Surrender Perfeet, they have one thing in common. They just give a lot for just three mana, right? And I guess um, Hypnotic Spectre is the hardest to cast here because it's two black and one. Two, two flyer, right? And when you attack and it deals damage to the opponent, your opponent has to discard a card at random. That is incredibly strong. If your opponent doesn't have an answer to that, your opponent is in serious trouble. Setch Troll, another card that's just really good for three mana. One uh, red and two for a two, two. And when you play a Swamp, it gets plus one, plus one, and you can regenerate it for a black. So it's a three, three, basically, with regeneration for three mana. Again, incredible stats. Then, of course, all-time, all-star, uh, Surrender Efreet, three mana for a three, four flyer. I mean, that's also insane. So we see a lot of power here. And what I like is um, that he's not going with Dark Ritual, for example, because that that could set yourself up for card disadvantage, right? When you do Dark Ritual Hippie and your opponent answers with a Swords, then you're down two cards and your opponent's only down one card. And that kind of feels really, really bad. So instead, I guess, he's chosen to just slowly work towards three lands and then start casting creatures. And then after he's cast one or two creatures, he can protect them with counter magic. And earlier in the game, starting at turn two, if he finds the right lands, he can start countering as well. We see four counter spells. We see three power sinks. Then we also see, um, of course, the lightning bolts and the fireballs in this deck. And what's quite interesting, and this is probably a meta call, is that we see three terrors main. Um, terror could be a difficult card to play with because it cannot destroy black creatures or artifact creatures. But I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, I feel like X Points is a format with a lot of creatures. So, you know, Terra can work here main board. And since he's made it to the finals, I guess that kind of makes sense, right? Because usually you would see Terra more as a sideboard card in old school, where, you know, it, it because against a lot of decks, it doesn't work. But I think in X Points, because creatures, the decks are generally so creature heavy, it is a much better card. But again, let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. Uh, before I move on to the match, I would just like to point out the card Amnesia. I just, I love that card. I know, I know, I don't like Mind Twist, but I do like Amnesia, and you're probably wondering why. Well, first of all, because of the art, and because I think it's a fair card. It's very hard to cast. Uh, it's a card from the dark. You know, uh, it's art by Mark Poole. I just think it's a really, really cool card. Hopefully, uh, Priestley, you're going to board it in um, after the first game, I'm, I'm really hoping for that and, and to see this card in action. Okay, so this is the card, uh, the deck, sorry, of Priestley. We've looked at the deck of his opponent, David. That means we're ready. Let's go to the finals. Game number one, here we go. So it's David on the player with the Urnum Ganon deck. He's starting with the Felwer Stone, playing against Priestley on the right with his Blue Trolls deck. St starting with a Mistress Factory in passing turn, beautiful Winter Factory. And uh, David, of course, already having mana open for a potential disenchant if Priestley activates. And there's a lot of glare, though, but okay, thank you for moving it over to that spot. So there's a land tax, and that makes sense that David is not playing out any land. So is Priestley going to play out a land? He is, so now he's activating, attacking as well with the factory. So that means David's going to drop to 18, so he's kind of activating the land tax here. Here we see David, so he can look up three basic lands now. Show it to his opponent and then shuffle his library again. So there we see a plains. There is a lot of glare on the card. So I believe it's a plains and a forest. And another plains. And now he's going to shuffle up again. And these are the three cards that he can put in hand. So this is a great start for David, right? This is exactly what he wants to do. And I guess for him, the question now is, am I going to play out a land? Yes or no? The deck of Priestley needs basically three lands to work. So then Priestley can kind of stop playing out lands if he wants to. So I guess when you're David, it's fine to play out another land. But of course, I'm not sure if David has that information. So he's playing out another basic, playing out another Felwer Stone. And those Felwer Stones are just great. And there is a Pegasus, a 1-1 flyer with banding. 
that can put a little bit of pressure on the board, I guess. And here we see an Hypnotic Spectre. This is as to be expected from Priestley. A lot of three CMC creatures. So three mana is really the sweet spot for him. It does mean that David gets another activation. And I wonder if David has some removal in his hand as well. I guess a Swords right now uh, would be great. Just a Swords in attack. So here we see him gathering three basic lands out of his uh, library. Two forests and a plains he's going to shuffle up again. And then it's going to be interesting, right? What else does he have in hand? Perhaps a Sarah Angel. He's got two Felwer Stones. There's really no need for him to play out any more lands. The nice thing is that that City of Brass is making his Felwer Stones really, really good. Ooh, he's tapping six. Of course he's got a trike. I forgot all about the trikes in his deck. Uses the trike to shoot down the Hypnotic Spectre. It is a bit hard to see, unfortunately, because of the glare. But he's got a Triskelion with one counter on it still. It's a 2-2. And he's got a Pegasus. And this is interesting. Priestley continues to play out land, so he's kind of allowing David to look for more basics. He's probably thinking, ah, oh, he doesn't have that many basics in his deck anymore. And I guess he's right, because Priestley is actually not using his land text right now. Playing out a forest, attacking for one here. And I'm a little bit surprised that Priestley continues to play out lands, because he is, of course, the Armageddon player. And this is, I believe, that Time Elemental. That is a Sarah Angel. And I cannot really identify the other card on the board. It is a Birds of Paradise, I think. It is very unfortunate that the quality of David's cam is so poor. There we see a Hypnotic Spectre being played out, but that's not going to do much against that Sarah Angel there. Remember that Time Elemental on the side of David is actually a Spanish Sarah Angel. It is a misprint. And now I believe we see David using the Lantex again. I mean, things are looking super good for David. It's going to be really tough for Priestley to get back. I guess if you're Priestley, what you're hoping for is uh, Nevenerals Disc. And then, of course, that David doesn't have a disenchant to take care of it. Because one Nevenerals Disc activation would, like, reset the entire board. And then uh, Priestley is left with two factories. So that would actually be pretty good. And I have to say, David is committing pretty hard here on the board. So he's attacking with the Pegasus as well. Interesting. And with the Sarah Angel. Kind of indicating that he's got some trick. Of course, if Priestley blocks the Pegasus, um, David can use the counter from the trike. To kill it so that's probably the idea behind it so i guess he's just going to take five here mm, is he got okay he's going to jump on the sarah he's going to take a damage drop to 15. and what else is david going to do here he's got all that mana i mean an armageddon would be almost game here that would be absolutely ideal He's playing Dark Heart of the Wood instead. Also a really, really good card. Talked about this in the deck deck, right? One black, one green to cast for an Esham. And Sack of Forest, gain three life. So this is an incredibly strong card. Also with Lantex, it's really nice to see these two working together. So he can Sack Forests. That means he'll have, probably have less lands than Priestly. And then he can activate his Lantex again. So that is pretty, pretty sweet. I mean, things are just really, really looking great for David here. He's going to tap even more. Are we going to see a second Sarah Angel? A second Sarah Angel here hitting the board. Yeah, it's really difficult to see, but luckily these are cards we know very well, so they're easy to identify. There's a Lightning Bolt. Oh, and Lightning Bolt on the Sarah Angel, of course. He blocked it with the Hippie, so it's still at two damage on it. This is a nice play by Priestley, at least killing a Sarah. It does take him two cards, though, but, I mean, you've got to do what you've got to do. I believe he's on 14 still at the moment, which is pretty high. And, um, you know, David can now deal 5 points of damage here, putting him on 13. That's exactly what's happening. Sorry, on 9, because he was on, uh, on 13 already. 14, sorry. Um, anyway, so he's going to drop to 9. Math is difficult, people. Anyway, he's on 9 here. Let's see what Priestley can do. Wow. I mean, I have to say it's beautiful to see that four winter factories and there. Oh, disenchant. Oh, and that's it. Yeah, Priestley knows it. Nevenerals Disc was his way out. And uh, I understand Priestley wanting to continue playing until he finds his disc. But then that disenchant 
and then it was really, really over. But this is only game number one, so let's quickly continue to the next game and, uh, and see how these finals are going to unfold. Game number two, here we go. So David winning the first one, that means Priestley is on the play, starting with a volcanic island. There's a basic planes by David. Ooh, finding a Mox again. It's hard to see, but that's a Mox Emerald, I believe. Playing a land tax. Another great opening for David here. And again, Priestley has to decide, am I going to play out a land and activating the tax? I think he has no other choice than to do so. I mean, you've got to play your own game as well, playing a, uh, a Mishra's Factory there. And we also see a Scavenger Folk on the side of David, by the way, which can be quite useful against that factory. And here we, of course, see that land tax activation in upkeep. So three lands looked up by David, two forests and a basic planes. He's shuffling up again and then he can draw a card. So what a great start again for David. And this is bad news for Priestley. Drawing a card here for turn. So four cards in hand. I mean, land tax early is just insane. Playing out of forest, tapping the white. There's a Sylvan library. Again, it's hard to see, but this is a Sylvan people. What a great start for David. What Sylvan library means he's got some card selection going. And there's, of course, is the three mana from Priestley. That means he can start playing out his creatures. Here we see a Setch Troll that is a 3-3 because of that basic swamp in play. And it has regeneration. I think if you're Priestley, you're like, oh man, I just ran out of luck for some reason. Look at this. Again, of course, that activation with the uh, with the Atlantics. He's a bit he's a little bit doubting here. Do I want to get three basic lands or not? Looks like he's putting one back. I would personally always go for three because it also means that the chances of you finding a useful card from the top of your deck are higher. You really don't want to draw into basics. Then again, he does have the Sylvan. Looking at his hand again, he is a little bit in the tank here, deciding, am I going to go for two or three? He is deciding to go for three. I, I think that is the right decision. Then again, you know, I'm not the one piloting this deck for a whole tournament month and making it all the way to the final. So I'm sure that whatever decision David makes here is the better decision. And now he's going to look at his cards. I mean, this is this is life of luxury for David here. Lantex, Sylvan. I mean, he's the only thing he needs is just like a Sarah Angel or something or an Urnum. Um, to kind of start smashing face. You know, if he can this turn play out an Urnum and then, you know, potentially um, next turn an Armageddon, that would be ideal for David here. Of course, you know, Priestley does have some counter magic in his deck as well, and he's got terrors, so he has some answers. He stepped out now, but then maybe next turn, you know, if he can just keep some counter magic up for a potential Armageddon. Or a big creature. I'm really wondering if David's going to cast a big creature here. That would be ideal for him, I feel. An Urnum, you know, an Urnum could block the Setch Troll. Obviously, a Sarah Angel would be better. We don't see that. We do see not a really good card. Dark Heart of the Wood is back in action again, which is really nice for David. Because it means it doesn't matter anymore, you know, how many lands uh, Priestly plays out. He can just control it, kind of. And here we see some damage with the set troll and, and swords to plowshares on the end step here. I think that's a really good move by, by David. End step here, swords to plowshares. That means that Priestley is going to go up to 23. Or he's going to go back to 20. He did take some damage, it seems. And there we see David going to the Sylvan Library again. I mean, he can just cherry pick. I mean, life is just really, really good when you're David. Tapping four. Are we going to see an Urnum? Sacking the fourth. Armageddon? Oh, 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 Armageddon. Oh, man. I wonder if we're going to see a counterspell here. There's a terror. I think that sacking of the forests was quite risky. I think he first could have played out the Armageddon and said, do you have any response? And then if there's no counterspell, then he could have sacked the forests. I believe that would have been the, the right order of play. Uh, we do see, of course, extra life because of those sacked forests. And now he's playing a forest out again. I find that quite interesting. I expected him not to play out a land so that Priestley would here activate the land tax. Ooh, now, of course, he can sack the forest in end step to his dark heart so that he can activate the tax. He's a little bit into tank here. What to do? No, he's not doing it. Okay. The cool thing as well here is the synergy between dark heart of the wood and Sylvan. Because now he can just pay for life. It doesn't matter. He just gained a lot of life with his own dark heart. He's actually going to draw two extra cards. 
I believe. So dropping to 19, I mean, it's just really nice to see these synergies in action. Lantex, Sylvan, Dark Heart of the Wood, they work together so, so well. Also remember, Lantex allows David to reshuffle his deck if it's activated. So that means he keeps seeing new cards over and over again. And yeah, it's just really sweet to see this on the board, David. There we see an Urnum. Okay, the 4-5 powerhouse here. Does Priestly have another Terror? Already played one. Okay, this is an answer. This is actually pretty good here. That Mesa Viv. And David is now probably going to try to find some more creatures. If he has one more land, and he does, he can play Sarah. There's Sarah Angel. He can start swinging in. There's a Terror on the Sarah. And I like this from, from Priestly's point of view, that he's keeping the Terrors for the Flyers. He knows that the Flyers are slightly harder to deal with than the ground creatures. And there we see Priestly here sacking a forest so he can actually activate uh, his Lantex again. So he probably knows that the cards that are on top are not the cards that he wants to see and the Lantex will allow him to shuffle again. So that makes his Sylvan a lot, a lot better. Looking up two basics. The cool thing about Sylvan, uh, sorry, Lantex is even if you don't have any basics in your library anymore, you can still use it. So you can just use it for the shuffle effect, which is worthwhile when you've got a Sylvan. So let's see what he's going to do. Are we going to see some more creatures? Yeah, there is another Urnum. This is something Maze of If kind of forces you to just play more answers. Dare we see a Power Sink? I was kind of wondering where those counter spells were. And that's, for example, also why I like the combination Maze of If, Wrath of God, because with a Maze, you're forcing your opponent to commit to the board, and then you can Wrath, which is quite nice. But okay, that's not relevant in this game, by the way. Both players don't have a Wrath of God. Uh, you know, I have to say, Priestley is managing really, really well. I would have expected David to kind of walk away with this game again uh, just because of that explosion star explosive start and he's got um, you know dark heart of the wood sylvan and lantex so he's got a great engine going there but i mean Priestley is hanging in there and as long as you're hanging in there you can still win it actually he's doing more than just hanging in his life total is still quite high he's on 23 i believe it's kind of hard to see the life score there on the on the telephone uh the smartphone there of, of Priestley, unfortunately He's playing another land, asking for the hand size. And, ooh, Sulkanar, the Swamp King. It's always cool to see Sulkanar. So it's a 5-5, five five. it's got Swamp Walk. And every time a black spell is being cast, um, Priestly is gaining a life. Does take a damage from the City of Brass, by the way. And again, we see David looking up some cards. Or actually just reshuffling the deck probably. He's probably taken out all the basics already. But that shuffle effect is just great with Sylvan. Looking at the top cards. And, and this game is quite interesting. You know, like I said before, I really thought David had this. But, you know, Priestley had the right terrors, had the counters, had the maze of if. He's still very much in it. And I wonder if, if David can find swords here for the uh, Soul Canard Swamp King. There is a Pegasus. Okay, at least that can fly over. But remember, the maze is still there. I'm kind of expecting Priestley to just attack. Although, he can block in a band. Remember, Pegasus has banding. How that works is he can band it with the Urnum, then put all the damage on the Pegasus and kill. But he's not doing it. He's probably thinking about a potential Lightning Bolt by Priestley. There's the untap after damage is dealt with the Maze of If. Maze of If is also great in offense, not just defense. And we see David now on 17, and I believe Priestley is on 21. Again, we see a shuffle. I mean, David, David should win this, I guess, because he can still sack some forests to gain some extra life. Uh, sorry to gain, yeah, and then use that life to gain some more cards with Sylvan. But I mean, for now, it's looking pretty okay for for Priestley. And does he want to attack here? He can swing in for one at least. And he is, I believe. Oh, he's attacking in a band. 
Is that what's happening? Or is he just attacking? Okay, no, he's attacking separate, it seems. Are we going to see a bolt now? There is a bolt. And, oh, what is this card? It's so hard to see. Oh, yeah, that is um saving him from the bolt. But a counterspell on this. I forgot the name, but it's like the green counterspell. You can counter an instant or an interrupt that targets one of your permanents. And here we see the block on the Urnum, killing the Urnum as well. So I guess he was attacking in a band, right? That would make the most sense. And uh, yeah, this is just a really good moment for Priestly here, having those counter spells in hand to counter that green counter spell from David. Avoid Fate, that's the name. So he countered the Avoid Fate. And yeah, that's just, that's just really good. And, and I mean, look at it now. At least David has found uh, the Sarah Angel. But he's on 12. He's quite low. Now, do remember, each of those, those forests represent three life, right? So he's far from dead. But um, yeah, it is interesting to see how much Priestly can do with just one Solkanar and a Maze of If. There we see um, Elves of Deep Shadow, the Elenis Morissette, as I always call her. There's probably just going to be another attack here. So he's just going to double block here. Take it back out of combat with the maze. Another maze of if. Ah, This is so annoying if you're David. Another maze of if here. And of course David again just shuffling up. Trying to find some new cards. And his library is getting pretty th thin actually. There we see David correcting the life total of Priestly, so that's kind of helpful, actually. So we've got David on 12, we've got Priestly on 21. You know, and despite David's insane engine going full swing, Priestly is actually winning this game, it seems. And I think that Counterspell on the Avoid Fade was, was really, really good, because that allowed him that turn to kill two creatures, you know, to wipe the board. And now having that double maze. So are we going to see another Sarah Angel? Okay, there's Sarah Angel number two. There's a Power Sink, though. And I mean, Priestley's got so many mana that Power Sink is no problem for him. Power Sinking away the Sarah Angel. And this is tough, you know. Remember, Priestley's playing three Power Sink and four Counter Spells. Attacking here, double blocking, taking him out again. Playing a Setch Troll. Setch Troll has regeneration again, another great creature to just attack with without having to deal with any consequence. And that's, of course, the big problem for David here. Priestley can just attack and attack and attack. He can regenerate, he can use the maze. And when he does damage, it's a bonus. It feels like this game is kind of slipping away here. There we see, is that a Winter Orb? That's actually quite interesting. That Winter Orb works really well against those Mazes of If. Remember, Winter Orb, you can only untap one land during your upkeep. What's interesting to see here, though, is that David hasn't used the Mox here to, uh, to cast a Winter Orb. There's the attack. I'm expecting him to double block again, because if he uses his mace, that's not actually that bad. Exactly. Is he going to use the mace, or does he have... Oh, he's actually going to trade. Nice. And there's an hypnotic specter. He's going to sack a forest here. Mm, or not. He is. What an interesting game this is. And again, a good move from Priestley, to be honest, because, you know, he had that Hypnotic Spectre in hand, and with the Sulkanar, the Swamp King, he killed the Sarah Angel, allowing the Hypnotic Spectre to kind of roam free in the air, hopefully next turn for, uh, for Priestley. Remember, it's one game up for David, and, I mean, it looks like it's going to be a 1-1. One -one. I mean, we're not there yet. David can see so many cards. But he's kind of running out of fuel, to be honest. There is a Birds of Paradise. You can use that as a chump blocker. Icy Manipulator. That's great. Icy and Winter Orb. Wow. That is really good because now he can do multiple things. He can tap his own Winter Orb so he gets to untap all his lands, but he can also start tapping down the lands of Priestly to make sure that he cannot do anything anymore. And I believe, okay, he's tapping down the Sedge. 
doesn't want to take too much damage. I think I would have actually taken the damage, but that's me, and I just would have tapped down that uh, City of Brass. I mean, you just want to make sure that David cannot do anything. The nice thing here for, for uh, sorry, that Priestley cannot do anything. The nice thing here for David is, you know, that he can start um, um, casting creatures without having to worry about potential counter magic from Priestley because of that Winter Orb and that Icy Manipulator. The problem here for David, of course, is, I mean, he's lost a lot of Sarah Angels already. So that's going to be a little bit difficult. I think there are two Sarahs in the bin, if I'm not mistaken. So that means he's got two left. Not 100% sure. Just have to wait and see how this game is going to unfold. Looks like he's going through his graveyard. Perhaps he's got uh, regrowth in hand. Looking at his cards again. So just a lot of choices that David has to make right now. Uh, we're going to see some actions, it seems. So there's the regrowth. I mean, I'm expecting him to get back a Sarah. Interesting. He's choosing to protect his life total instead. That is an interesting choice, passing turn here. I think he's probably going to use the Icy Manipulator for himself now. Exactly, so he can untap everything. And I hope for David that he keeps an eye on that volcanic island and that city of breath. Because what I'm seeing when I'm looking at the mana base, I see a counterspell. That's what I'm seeing. He's on five. I mean, I think if you're David, how many lands do you really need, right? I mean, you need five lands, maybe? Maybe six? So I would just sack a force here. Tapping. What is he going to cast? Oh, there's a Triskelion. And passing turn here. And so he, he was taking a risk here, David, casting the trike. Because there could have been a counterspell. And, okay, there's something here that David wants to do. Tapping the City of Brass, so that means a damage... I love using my Icy Manipulator with my Protocol Sorcerer, by the way, because that way you can deal just two points of damage, which feels really good. Um, and again, it's interesting to see that he's not tapping his Birds of Paradise to actually pay for the cost of his Icy Manipulator. That surprises me a little bit. Maybe he wants to use the Birds as a potential jump blocker, but then again, he's got the Triskelion. I wonder what Priestley is going to do now. Probably just going to keep his lands untapped. He can swing in with the troll. He can still regenerate it. Although it is going to cost him a land, though. He's got to tap a land, so he's not. That makes sense. There's a pass turn. Now remember, David can also only untap one land a turn. Going to look at the top three cards here. I think if I would be David, I would just put that Mox on top of my Icy, just to remind myself that I'm not tapping a land. Yeah, just image quality here is very, very poor, unfortunately, because it's such an interesting game, but it's just really difficult to follow. I think this is a Pegasus, 1-1 one, one banding, and he tapped his Birds and his Mox for that, so that makes sense, considering that he's got a Winter Orb in play. And now he's not using the Winter Orb. Ooh, he's gonna tap, he's gonna cast. There we see a flyer. There's the Surrender Jin. That actually doesn't have to be a bad thing because Surrender is also going to hurt Priestly. Of course, Priestly is still on 21 though, so it's, it's gonna take a long time. And he'll be forced to use his, his Icy Manipulator then against uh, the Surrender. So Surrender Befreed, of course, a 3-4 flyer from Arabian Nights deals 1 damage during your upkeep. It's a really, really good creature, but I feel like it's weakened a little bit because of City in a Bottle and, of course, the unrestriction of Maze of If. So those two things have really had an impact on the playability of Surrender Befreed. It's still a great card, but it makes it a little bit rougher. Okay, here we're probably going to see a Sarah Angel. I am a, not surprised about this, by the way. I won't say a little surprised, but I'm not because look at the lands 
of Priestley, he simply doesn't have any lands up to counter. So this is great timing by David here. And there he's stepping down the land. I think this is a really good move. You want to keep those lands stepped down. You want to make it really difficult here for Priestley. I mean, now he's got to take those damages in from his own Serendip. He's got the Sarah. He's going to shuffle. I believe Priestley already played a couple of Terrors. Remember, he's only playing two Terrors. Although it's hard to follow. And there we see, what is this card? Oh, City in a Bottle! Ho, 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 ho. That is so painful! And now what he can do, ex exactly, he's tapping down the Maze of If, and he's gonna attack. Look at that, a full-blown attack. Mega Pegasus, Sarah Angel, and a Triskelion. And it looks like he's just taking the damage. Again, it's hard to follow the life totals because that, that phone of Priestley is all the way on the right. But he must have fallen under 20. We do know that David's on 5, but again, that doesn't matter much. There is a regeneration on the set. I'm expecting a lightning bolt. Oh, there's an avoid fate protecting the Sarah Angel. That's it. Whoa, it's two up for David here. What a game number two. Insane. Absolutely insane. And that means that, David, you have won this month's X Points tournament. Tournament number 12. You're the man. Let's look at the deck again. We actually see the deck here in the background. And it was just really cool to see Lantax, Sylvan Library, and Dark Heart of the Wood work. You know, that engine going full throttle that's just very an impressive thing to see and uh, it's really tough to play against i think Priestley did a fantastic job in game number two to battle that engine and you know lantax just focusing on purely the lantax that card is so good if you get it early in the game it's already good later in the game but early it's really at its best and uh, you know david you found it early in both the games so that's fantastic but then of course you still have to win it's not an auto win if you have the land tech so um really really good magic from both of these players and i would also like to thank uh, louis for recording this match for sending this over he's of course the man behind the x points and in the description below you can find the link to their facebook group so if you're interested in this format check out the description there you'll find a link to their facebook group it's completely free to join so why not join them and um, another cool thing is the x points actually have a youtube channel of their own so you can check that out as well if you want to see more x points games and i also have an x points playlist i'll add that to the description as well where i just put all the x points games together that i've done here on timmy talk so that's a lot of finals and some really really cool games in there as well so if you haven't checked that out take a moment to check it out and before you go i would like to ask you to like subscribe and share you know all those things really really help timmy talks move forward and of course comment i'm forgetting a few things here um but yeah all that helps timmy talks move forward it's completely free to do and youtube loves it so i would really really appreciate it if you could hit that like button another thing that you can do is you can also become a sponsor of the show you can join the timmy talks crew on patreon and if you do it means you'll have access to the timmy talks discord server it means that um we can play a game if you want and it also means that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll what end scroll well this end scroll
Kikitus, thinkitus, somber kazee. 